you're ready for a bit of research, aren't you? I know it. Welcome to the stage next, Kevin Lau. Um, he is an environmental scientist and urban climatologist from the Institute of Future Cities and CUHK Jockey Club Institute of Aging at the Chinese University of Hong Kong. He does research on how planning and design of in outdoor spaces can improve health and well-being and he's going to talk about the built environment, depression and older people. Take it away, Kevin. Thank you very much. Um, so I'm going to share about like our recent research on the mapping of the elderly depression in Hong Kong. So depression is not just, um, is not, doesn't mean just being sad. Uh, it means there are a lot of like uh, public health issues that is related to uh, depression, especially in elderly people. For example, they are they're associated with the risk of um, suicide and also uh, reduces their ability to rehabilitate, rehabilitate from any um, uh, I mean to reduce their resilience and um, but in Hong Kong or even in the world there are, there are very few studies to um, to look at how uh, the, our living environment affect the depression risk in, in the living environment so in Hong Kong so I think most of you are very familiar with our urban space I mean our urban environment very high density and very high rise and therefore it is very distinctive in terms of our uh, the urban settings in, in the world Oops. So uh, in our study, we are we're trying to incorporate the um, the parameters of our built environment into um, the, to understand how these all these factors affect the depression risk in elderly people. For example, the first the, the open space based on the land use uh, data that, that we have, and also the greenery from the satellite image, we can identify the uh, the extent of the greenery in in Hong Kong, and also we have the building data so that we know the building form. For example, like the building height and also the coverage, so it tells how the uh, the urban form or the building form will affect uh, the the depression risk. So based on the model, so we can forget about the statistics. But I mean, from from the results of our mapping, then it is quite um, uh, interesting that it coincides with the uh, the traditional understanding of our uh, of the. Uh, of what we perceive depression in Hong Kong. For example, in the uh, urban core area, like Mong Kok, Sam Shui Po, then we found that uh, it is related to the uh, standard deviation of the building height, oh, so, which is an indi indicator to the uh, to urban form. Uh, because in those areas, in Kowloon City, in those areas, we found that there are a lot of like um, old, uh, old buildings, but some of them are being redeveloped. So, the entire district is actually undergoing a process of uh, gentrification, so which marginalized the elderly people living in those areas. And at the same time, the depression risk is lower, of course, in the Hong Kong island, or on the uh, on most of the Hong Kong island because of uh, the high social uh, socioeconomic status. And um, for new towns, we found that the, the risk is not as high as the old urban area because um, because it's not. Of course, sometimes you may perceive, like in those uh, in Tin Shui, those areas, they are probably uh, more socially deprived. But at the same time, the social connection within the community could be better than in the uh, old urban area. So these are uh, some initial findings from uh, from our studies, which has been just uh, has just been published. And uh, at the same time, we also look at uh, the the benefit of green space in uh, in, uh, in a high density environment. So uh, I think. Most of you are very familiar with the health benefit, for example, like the uh, physical and mental health, the improve, uh, improvement to the physical activity, but also um, reduction in terms of uh, suffering from stresses. But we can't get a high park in Hong Kong anyway. So most of our green, space, green spaces in Hong Kong, they are, um, they are characterized by very fragmented, but at the same time, there are a lot of uh, uh, activities happening within our green spaces, even like in uh, very small pieces of vegetation and also some some sitting areas, they could be very useful to uh, to the residents living in in the environment. So uh, I think in Hong Kong, when we when we design our green spaces, we need to know what people need, what people perceive uh, the green spaces in our environment. We perhaps I mean the elderly people they may not need a high park; they just need a sitting out area. Uh, in the close proximity of, uh, of their, their living place. 
So in this study, we look at the uh, uh, the perception and also the preference and the usage pattern of uh, of the elderly people. And at the same time, we are going to uh, correlate with their health condition by a very simple health survey. And then from that, we hopefully we can uh, learn more about how we should design our green spaces in Hong Kong. So in our studies, we also we will also uh, include different design elements, for example, shading and trees, because they are very important to, they are actually very important elements that can encourage people to go to the green space. They're not uh, avoiding them. And also seating facilities, so very, very uh, basic design elements. But interestingly, we also uh, found that the recreational activities is very important to them because uh, they, mo uh, some of the elderly people, they go to the uh, spaces there to enjoy these kind of activities. And these are some results from our pilot study, which has been conducted in Hong Kong and Thailand. Uh, we're comparing two cities in terms of uh, the difference in the uh, density. But uh, there are some common findings that we found that the visit uh, frequency and uh, is, uh, is related to the, uh, uh, to the health conditions and also the perceived safety uh, is, is related to how the people can um, uh, to facilitate their, 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 their role in terms of the physical health. So uh, the, the study is actually ongoing, so uh, we hopefully we can uh, get more uh, findings and results from, from that long. And uh, to conclude, that uh, in, in the recent the strategic planning documents in Hong Kong, the 2030 plus, um, there one of the policy focuses is to uh, cater for the need for an aging society. And therefore, one of, one of the uh, uh, focus is the housing and also the universal design in terms of provision of uh, uh, an age-friendly built environment. So I believe that our, the, green, the design of green space is very important in this regard. And also, uh, it's also co uh, in line with the, uh, the, the WHO uh, age-friendly city concepts. So to, to finish off, uh, this, this is a quote, quote from, uh, from a recent article that the age-friendly built environment is actually uh, focus on enabling them rather than disabling them. So we found that we found from the interview with the uh, with the uh, elderly people that it's it's quite true that they tend to be uh, enabled rather than being disabled. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much, Kevin. That was fantastic, and it's certainly resonating with what the global the global research is talking about. We were very excited about green space and its links to mental health, but increasingly now people are saying you can't just have green space. It's what, what, what facilities it has, what you can do in the green space, whether you feel safe, whether you're able to socialize in that green space. And there's lots of interesting thinking to be done about how to achieve that best.